Lars, thanks for answering my previous question uh, on the videos. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's great. Now where uh, I actually have repeat people I'm answering. That's cool. Um, I have another question for you. I've tried to model a version of an attached photo. We got to get a photo up on the screen. So it's back here. Let's open up a new document here. And there we go. Um, how, what would be the easiest way to recreate the pattern on this drain cover? Uh, not concerned with the text, just the pattern. This, again, this is uh, from John. Um, yeah, so the way I would do this, John, um, is actually I would look, I would probably look for symmetry in here. So what I would do is in a document here, I will go ahead and do the canvas up here. Click on canvas. I would select the plane. It's going to be the top plane here. And let's go out and pull that uh, image in. That image comes in. Um, and I would actually probably just hit OK for right now. Um, because if we go to the top view and we look here, uh, we can turn the origin back on, on that little new, now it's an eyeball. But what I would probably do is right click and try to calibrate the canvas, right? Um, and I'm gonna try to hit within where I think that actually this kind of, uh, this thing is, so let's click here and over to about there. And I'm gonna say this one is about 250 millimeters. It's gonna blow up on our screen right now. Um, and then I would actually probably now, I would right click again, and instead of recalibrating, I would hit edit canvas. That brings us back into this thing here. And then I would start placing the origin, you see the origin there to the right of the image, somewhere around what I think is best around the center. And you could actually also start trying to align, there's three screws in there. You could maybe look at the text. I know you said you didn't care about the text, but maybe we do that anyways and kind of like get this the text kind of um, aligned up here. And th again, this is an image, so we, we don't have to get it fully, um, fully, fully great. Now, I'm going to say this is OK, and I'm going to hit OK. So um, what I would do to model this uh, drain cover up is I would look for symmetry, like I said. So we have three screws in here. Um, countersunk screws, and I would use the hold command for that. Um, but that normally works for solids. So I would actually wait till I have a solid for that. So I wouldn't worry too much about the screw holes right now. Um, but, and you also said you didn't care about the text. What we normally, what we're looking at is these, uh, these slots in here. So I, again, I would look for a pattern and it almost looks like to me that there is a pattern, this section right here looks very familiar with this pattern, with this pattern, and with this pattern. So it's almost like if we drew up this pattern, we could mirror that over this line, and we could mirror it over this line, uh, over this the X line, and then get it up here. And then there is another pattern going on here that probably is a little bit different than this pattern. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, now, we could start sketching this up in, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, I would probably start calling this my pattern one and maybe call this my pattern two and then that kind of start sketching, uh, sketching from that per se. So, um, and I'm, again, there's a million different ways to do this, but let's just go ahead and start sketching something up and then we can at least somewhat uh, take take a look at it. So I'm going to start a new sketch on that top face there. And I would actually probably start kind of like drawing up what I think is my section. So I'm going to draw a line down here and I scaled everything up to be 250 millimeters in diameter. And I kind of just made that number up. So I'm going to create a line that goes around here, 125 this way. So now I kind of have two, I kind of have a piece of the pizza pie here, right? And uh, we could go in and do an arc. Um, and this one here, center point arc, might look like that would be pretty good for this. And anytime you're doing these arcs, um, if you move your mouse out to the side, look, it comes up and gives you, next to the cursor there, it gives us a little what it's looking for. Use that. 
So it says place center point. So we now that that we know that that's the first thing we got to place the center. Place this one here and this one here. Now it is blue. It's not black because it needs to be fully defined with a uh, dimension. Okay. This is what I would do. I have kind of established now that this is my center point with my dimensions are coming from that. And that's where all my different slots is going to come from too. So now let's start with this inside slot. So I will go up and uh, I will go in here and do a slot command. And again, if you're looking here, there's some different options. Uh, three point arc slot might be good. And you can actually see a little text comes out next to it that says creates an arc slot defined by a three point center arc and slot width. And then some more specify the start point and the end point of the slot center arc. Specify the third point of the center. So it gives you the kind of like this, uh, this thing here. So if we click here and we click here, then you will see we kind of get uh, this arc point. Now, this is not going to be super accurate, um, but we could play around with it. So I'm going to decide that the width of this one is 10 millimeters for sure. Um, and then you could, you know, start kind of moving this around and try to get it a little bit close to what you kind of think is close. And then you could start locking this down with dimensions. Um, so let's do that. So D for dimension, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. Um, D for dimension, I'm gonna select the, the center origin here, and then I'm gonna go down and kind of select this outer edge here. Now, if I do that, notice how it tries to do it from center of my origin, what is up here, to the center of that arc. But it's actually not wrong if I place the dimension. So when I selected this arc here, it actually does it to the center. But just so you know, if I delete that dimension again, you can do this the origin, then right click and say pick circle tangent arc. And now when I select that, I get what I actually want, uh, what is kind of uh, a dimension to the tangent of the arc and not the center. You could start rounding these up right now, um, but when you do that, it many times does makes it that your picture start being being skewed. So I normally actually don't do that. I will actually, depending on if I have a 2D drawing, I might go ahead and start rounding these down. But um, if you don't, and it's just a picture, I just find it a lot easier to just start throwing in these dimensions uh, to try to uh, to try to lock down what it is you want. And of course, you're putting these dimensions to make this fully black. Uh, so this was one way to do it. We could also have used, if I just delete some of these dimensions again, we could have used D for dimension, right click, tangency, and we could have used a tangency to do the overall width if we rather had done that and then locked this dimension down uh, with the last dimensions. We're going to make it black, right? So the little trick there is to tangency. But as soon as you start trying to round up these numbers, it does become hard uh, to do with these. Now, just to speed things up, I'm not going to fully define the rest of them, um, but um, I would go ahead and kind of do the same process with the next one. So the next one here, kind of this one, and it gets a little harder because this one is, you could have cleaned. You could have cleaned out, uh, John, the, the picture before you sent it to me, <laughs> the, the great here. Um, you could be tempted with these here, you see more symmetry. You could be tempted to go ahead and create a line from the origin here to the midpoint. This doesn't look like that this pizza pie is complete to the midpoint. We're gonna go ahead and make a line there. You could go ahead and uh, we could draw up the remaining slots here. Um, like this here, right? So do these slots here, let's do uh, this one. You can see that the radius gets less and less. On these, this actually might not be a full slot. It actually looks like maybe it's, it's, it's quince, uh, it's like sharp down in the corner, but I think you're starting to get the point here. Uh, that is how I would do it. And then you could go in now and we could do a mirror. 
Um, whenever you're selecting something in um, in mirror here, you know if you double click on the on this entity, it selects everything. Uh, it's changed it. If you double click, and then we could mirror this over this line, and we will now get uh, get that here. So I would finish this sketch up here. Finish the sketch. Uh, there we go. Uh, and I would prob I would fully define them all. I've already said that. Uh, and I would probably call this sketch uh, number one. And then, um, and you can actually rename it if you didn't know. You can right click on the sketch and you can uh, rename it. We could call it uh, first pattern. Right? Boom, like this. Um, and then I would draw up the second pattern in the second sketch. And then I probably would do one more uh, final sketch, maybe, where I just go ahead and uh, hit C for circle and uh, draw a, a circle out. That is 250. Like this. And uh, that sketch um, is going to show up. Oh. I didn't want it in that first sketch. I'll do that. I will create a new sketch. So I get a, a, a second. So there will be three sketches down here. One will be called pattern one, first pattern, second pattern. And then now the, the last one will be just a circle for itself. Uh, 250 millimeters. This is one way to do it. So you kind of keep everything separate. And if we're going to do a press pull. Um, and let's go downwards. Minus 10 millimeters. And let's turn off the picture for a second. So we kind of have this one here. And now I could go in and do a uh, press pull with that first sketch. So we could select all these entities in here. Boom, 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 boom. Like this. And we could just make that a cut uh, all the way through. And we could do that the same thing. We could do that this, with the with the second pattern, and then I would go in here and mirror uh, mirror the the features. So that would be that cut section through over this plane here. So there are those. Right click, repeat mirror features will be the first feature and the mirror, and do that over that there okay and now if we turn the canvas back on on the eyeball you can kind of see it's going to not be perfect but you can see how we got pattern one in there we will still have to do pattern two um but now we could actually go ahead and go in and create the hole um and that will be placed on this face here somewhere wherever we we kind of want to place that hole so I would bring that over about there. Um, you can use dimensions in here. That's going to be all the way through. It's going to be a countersink. Um, and the top hole here, I don't know, maybe that is 18. The small here is maybe that is 10 or 8. I don't know. Um, it's hard to see with the picture on. But now we got that. So I would create three of those. For the screws uh, in there. John, I hope uh, that that kind of gave you an idea to do this. Again, there's a million ways to do this, um, but this would be would be one way to do this. I think this was a kind of kind of a fun little fun little exercise. Uh, put some chamfers on it and stuff like that in uh, in the end. Hope you found this useful, John. Thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. That's okay. Um, really appreciate you guys. Watching these videos, if you haven't subscribed, really appreciate it. All right.